Let's rectify the situation we saw in the previous video where the light bulb's here and we light the top of the arrow nice and bright here, but then right here I should expect the back the arrow to be lit, but instead the top's lit because we do the lighting over here and then translate the arrow over there. That's a quick recap of the last video. What we need to do is transform our vertex position by the model to world transformation matrix that we're using for the arrow. And there's a few ways we can do that. We could simply just add that position. Since it is a translation, we could just add that position. Or we could use the transformation matrix. To start out with, let's just use the transformation matrix because that's what we're used to. I'm going to go to my GL window here. We still have this teapot code in here. Just for this video, I think I'm going to take it all out. Don't blink. Okay, I left the drawing code for the arrow, for the arrow centered, and the plane. Let me just tell you what these comments mean. Arrow centered means the arrow that's centered there in the scene. Arrow translated, this is this arrow that my mouse is over right now. It's out there. That is the translated arrow. Translated meaning we moved it. And then we have the plane, which is also centered. Its origin is also centered on the world axis. So we have arrow translated, arrow centered, and arrow plane. To get the lighting consistent on the arrow translated, what we have to do is use the model to world transformation matrix on our vertex position. So that will happen in the vertex shader. Let's actually go look at the vertex shader. You'll see I've added some other shaders I'll talk about in future videos. I was messing around. For now, let's focus on this one. We have this uniform that has the full transformation matrix. I can't use this matrix because that moves the model from its model space all the, world to all the way to projected space. I just want to do my lighting equations in the world coordinate space. And so we need another uniform. Mate 4, matrix 4, model to world transform matrix. And now we can use that model to world transformation matrix on position. Remember, we pass the position to the position, which sends it on to the fragment shader so we can get better lighting. But this position is a model space. And then this one is assuming world space, or at least in the fragment shader, it's assuming world space. So we need to take this transformation matrix, apply it to our vertex position, and bam, we're done. We'll have the proper position in the fragment shader. But we need to send this down as a uniform. Now that we've added it as a uniform, we've got a MeGL window. And then, I don't know, we'll just be dirty. Right here, I'll say GL int. Model to world transform matrix uniform location. That is a long variable name, almost too long. Steve Halliday be yelling at me for that one. Uh, but I'd rather have my code be more readable than not. So whatever. GL get uniform location program ID. Like that variable name so long. We're gonna have to go to the next line. Give me the uniform location for model to world transform matrix. And then right here, before we do draw elements, I'll say GL uniform matrix for FB model to world transformation. We'll do the long variable name. Uh, there's one of them. Please don't transpose it for me. And then we need to pass the matrix in, which is arrow model to world. We need to take the address of the first. So when I say sub zero there, that returns a vec four. And then when I say sub zero, that is the index operator on the vec four returned by this indexing operator. And this indexing operator returns a reference to the first float in that vec four. So essentially combining these gives me a reference to the first float in this matrix. I can take the address of that, send that down as my uniform. And we also need to do the same thing with the centered one, because if we don't, then this matrix will be full of zeros, and zero times anything will collapse that arrow down to the origin, which I don't want to do. But you'll notice I left out the model to world transformation matrix there because it was the identity matrix. There wasn't really a model to world transform going on. Essentially, it was the same as saying times mate four. But I think for consistency, we'll just do it so it helps you out. Arrow model to world matrix. I'll just reuse this one right here. Since we're done with it, I've sent it down. Uh, gets mate four, the identity matrix. I'll copy that. I'll apply it to my world to projection matrix. The same way I'm doing up here, just to be consistent. We get this nice full transform for the first arrow. Nice full transform 
for the second arrow. And so that means I can copy and paste this code. Uh, I'll copy and paste it right here. Because this is the identity matrix, we'll send down the identity matrix for that centered arrow. Guess what? Got to do the same thing with the plane. Plane model to world matrix, I believe is just the identity matrix. In fact, since it is the identity matrix, I don't need to create a temporary matrix and copy it to that matrix. I can just rely on the uh, parameterless constructor of mate4 to create a identity matrix. But same thing down here, I need to send that down. I guess I could reuse or rely on what's up here, but I don't like doing that. So I'll actually paste this here. And instead of saying arrow model to world, I'll do plane model to world, even though that's the identity matrix again. Okay, drum roll please. If this works correctly, the back of the translated arrow should be nice and lit. The top should be dark. Control F5, build that, run that, and oh, we get shader compile errors. What's the, what's the oh, you know what? <laughs> Over here in the vertex shader code, this is a mate 4 and this is a vec 3. I'm trying to Multiply matrix 4 against a VEC3. This has to be a VEC4 or else translation won't work. And that's what we're trying to do anyway, is the translation. Go watch the Game Engine programming playlist if you, can, if you want to see why translation is so important. But essentially this has to be a VEC4. So we already made it a VEC4 over here. So I'll just grab V, Control C, Control V. But then the position is a VEC3. I believe that's right. So that's interesting. This has to be a VEC4. So that translation works right here. But after we've translated it, we have the new translated value inside of the resulting vector that pops out of this expression that I've just highlighted. So I can actually say, hey, go back to a VEC3 now that I've translated you. And that's a nice conversion for the position, which is also a VEC3. Poor man's way of thinking between VEC4s and VEC3s. Essentially, we need a VEC4 when we want to do translation and also per perspective projection. We'll talk about those later in later videos. For now, I just need that new translated position after I do the translation of my VEC4. Control F5, build that, run that. We have our nice lit arrow, as we've seen, and then look up and hey, the back of that arrow is lit up. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Feeling good about that. Feeling good about that. In fact, let me. Uh, I don't really should do a, a different camera scheme. Okay, my light position's right here, so I'd expect the top of this arrow to be nice and lit, and I would expect the back of this arrow to be nice and lit, but not the top because my light is sitting right here, and that has to do with the dot products of the light position vectors and the surface normals. Again, I'll just kind of demonstrate that. We have our light position vector, we have our vertex position vector, we subtract the two, we get our light vector, but then we normalize that guy down to length one, so the dot product kicks out the cosine. We also have our surface normal vector coming out like that. And you can see there's not much theta there, so the cosine will be close to one, thus lighting up the back of this arrowhead. However, the top of the arrowhead are surface normal vectors like that. There's lots of theta between this green light vector and the surface normal like that. And so the cosine is pretty close to zero. And that's why the top of this arrow is nice and dark now. So woohoo! We fixed it by making sure we're consistent with our coordinate spaces. And voila, we're good. Now, in the next video, I'm going to rotate this arrowhead and we'll see that it'll all break again. And I'll show you how to fix that one. So next video.